To measure the extent of sea level rise on their local beach, students of Biddeford College are examining the Pebble Ridge. They are calculating what will happen as the climate warms. They have made a website called The Big Climate Thing. They take photos to get the idea of flooding across to others. They have purposely exaggerated the effect to bring the point home. It's made me aware of how climate change is affecting our local area, especially um, by the river and in, by the beaches. We've been looking at the Pebble Ridge and how it's retreating and how the sea is eroding it and causing this change and what effects it will have on the land behind it. If the Biosphere Reserve is a forum to cope with the rising tide of concern about sea levels, it fulfills a useful purpose. But there is another factor at play, money. To defend the boroughs as they stand today would be enormously expensive. If there were a nuclear power station there, or if there was the, the will to do so, to spend the money, uh, then it could be done. But if nature is to be allowed to take its course, then in fact uh, it, it is curtains for northern boroughs. The biosphere reserve in Britain is twinned with a Kenyan biosphere in Malindi and Watamu on the coast. The idea is to share experience and develop an understanding of each other's problems. There's some interesting similarities there that we thought were worth exploring. This would be a pilot for other reserves to follow um, so that you could have other north-south collaboration. Bell is travelling to the Kenyan biosphere to meet the committee who run the project in Malindi and Watamu. There is strong community spirit here, but they have other problems. About climate change also, this is something that is globally even everywhere, but at least we need something also to do about it. There were so many trees in Mikoko which you could not penetrate. Today the whole thing is empty and we had so many sensitive habitats, areas along here, but they are not there because the people are not looked after. It is not just the effects of sea level rise that the committee are worried about. The main problem is poverty, and poverty is what brings uh, the mangrove deforestation, the coral reef effects, poaching, and overfishing. Poverty is a major cause of problems in the Kenyan biosphere. Andy Bell and his counterpart Paul McKenzie have come to see how the new initiative of twinning could help. I noticed you've been talking about some of the real big issues that uh, affect this particular area. And likewise in North Devon in the UK we have some of those same problems. As we develop our solutions and you develop your solutions we can share. And this will be, we hope, the flagship, the special one in Kenya that leads the way. <laughs> Devon and Kenya have concerns in common. Climate change and sea level rise affects both coastlines. They depend on tourism for their income and prosperity. Wildlife habitats are threatened both by humans and natural causes. Coral reefs and marshlands need scientific evaluation and planning for protection. In both countries, development directly affects the environment. The biosphere status in Kenya is promoting a change in focus. In the recent past, it was estimated that 20% of the total mangrove forest has been lost along the Kenyan coast. Some has been cleared for agriculture and housing, some destroyed to produce salt factories, and some polluted by oil spills. Now the people themselves are encouraged to take an active part looking after the mangroves.
This place is very special and mangroves are very important to the community because first and foremost the mangroves are the hatcheries for fish which, is, which are being caught in the creek. They are not only a source of nourishment but vital building materials. We also have mangroves very important to the communities because they are the only building source they have because most of the communities are very poor. They are depending on the mangroves to build their houses. Careful harvesting is now replacing destruction of the mangroves. The other thing is tourists are visiting this place to see some migratory birds like flamingos. Those people cannot be coming here if we don't have the mangroves because the birds are coming to the mangroves and if they are not here the birds won't come and eventually the tourists won't be coming to see uh, flamingos here. Under the new biosphere project, destroyed mangrove forests are being replanted. Sea level rise is affecting communities the world over. Here in the Kenyan biosphere, it has severely damaged the beachfront. One of the jewels of the biosphere reserve is the beach where sea turtles come to lay their eggs. Locals from the committee are measuring the damage, but a full-scale survey has yet to be done. <laughs> turtles are precious to the community. Protecting them is now taken seriously, and when disasters do happen, a beach burial is a dignified affair. What we have here is Watamu's Marine Park Beach. It's one of Kenya's main and most important uh, turtle nesting beaches. What we're seeing here over the last years, especially since 2004, is a rapid increase in erosion. So these trees were once part of what we call the 30 meter reserve, which is from the top of the high level watermark of the beach going inland. And that's a very, uh, very important and fragile habitat so with the increase in erosion, what we've seen is a loss of that habitat. And so now the turtles are forced to nest in the central part of the beach where the nests are in danger of, uh, of being washed and uh, washed away and destroyed. And so climate change, rising sea levels, we're concerned that that might be playing a strong uh, role in, in this erosion event. Climate change in the Kenyan biosphere is also affecting its rivers. Mud and silt from the Sabaki River drains into the sea and stifles the coral reef. There has been little research, but it's easy to see the discharge by the colour of the water. There's been some good projects going on in the past and we've understood you know, from some of the research that's gone there, but there is a real lack of information and data to help people to make decisions about how their coast is going to change. And so where well, we've had the luxury of having some of the top quality consultants in the UK, we've got access to technology like LiDAR, which gives that nice 3D modeling. There's nothing like that here. Just as in Britain, feelings run high about protecting the coastline. New hotel developments are in the eye of a storm about damaging the beachfront. In the Blue Lagoon, an exquisite natural bay, a new development has been stopped because the locals protested. Andy is being shown the problem by members of the committee. We don't know exactly what is happening with the government's laws and regulations because first thing, there's no consultation. We are just seeing things happening. So investors are just coming and they, they, they're just doing developments. So we are appealing for the government to involve us so that we can participate to stop this unsustainable development because it's now destroying everything in our life. The tourists are coming here because of the unique of this place. So if we end up uh, changing our coastal uh, landscape, after 10 years, tourism is going, we will go down. There's been some Interesting sort of ideas and responses from the community, particularly uh, with uh, the reaction to the, the hotel development at uh, Blue Lagoon. Uh, how that's been a really strong reaction from the community against taking away their beachfront and then 
the community understanding what their resources are. And that's been a really interesting surprise. The biosphere's strengths will be different wherever they are formed. In Britain, the strong suit is scientific knowledge. In Kenya, it's community consciousness. Maybe that's what they can learn from each other. But perhaps more important still is that people become aware of the fact that biospheres exist at all. I don't think people on the street know what a biosphere is, and I think it's very important that they should know. Obviously, in school, we learn a lot about it, but the general public might not know. So I think if we get everyone informed, then everyone can act upon it and try and make a bit of a difference.